It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I'm finally here making another video. Like I said, it's a raw one, so there will be no edit. Anyway, this video is another draft breakdown from Draft Raw Authentic. Now, I already did the whole AFC North, and now I'm on to the NFC North. And if you're watching this video, I'm doing the last team in the NFC North. Now, so that pretty much means I already did videos on the Lions, the Packers, and the Vikings. So if you're a fan of those teams, or if you want to see those draft breakdowns, please check out that video. They are, they are pretty good breakdowns, so, hey, check them out. Anywho, um, this is the Bears, the Chicago Bears draft breakdown, so let's just get into it. In the first round, the Chicago Bears chose Roquan Smith. Now, Roquan Smith was one of my favorite linebacker prospects in the draft. Um, I seen this guy a lot more on TV than what I saw on tape. But I had to rewatch the tape. And it's, it's pretty amazing. His only flaw, he can pretty much do everything. Except for maybe probably be a pass rusher, but... That's not his game anyway. His only flaw would be taking on blocks. I think that, of course, he needs to get a little bigger and stronger, but he needs to find a way to take on blocks and be a way to punch and shed. Once he gets that down pack, this guy's going to be a beast, but I believe that he is fast enough to still make a living. Um, there was a guy that used to play in this league. He got suspended a bunch of times, but his name was Daryl Washington, and he played for TCU and got drafted by the Cardinals. He was one of the best middle linebackers in the league, and he was one of the only linebackers I've ever seen that literally did not take on blocks and make plays in the backfield. It's It was crazy how that worked out, but he did it, and maybe Roquan Smith can get to that point to doing it like he did, but we will see. But I would just say Chicago Bears, good draft pick. Anyway, in the second round, they chose James Daniels, center from Iowa. Not his huge, huge not his biggest fan. Um, I felt as though he could be the biggest bust of his position at center because of um in terms of the hype of who he is and then what he may turn out. Um James Daniels he was just uh, okay to me. Nothing popped out on tape. Um, I think that he only fits one scheme. I don't know if he would fit a, a, a straight up um, power scheme because they did. They did well. They kind of ran like a zone power scheme, but I think that um, his movement skills were not like great. They weren't bad, but they weren't great. But I felt as though he was average at everything that he does, which he can still turn out to be a pretty good player. But I don't think he will be a center that will be a, like a perennial pro bowler like I think about when I talk about Frank Ragnow that the Detroit Lions picked up in the first round. I just think that they're just, you know, they're two different players when it comes down to it. So um, not the hugest fan of the pick, but we'll see three years down the road when I go back to these draft breakdowns and I revisit their drafts. Anyway, so also in the second round, they chose Anthony Miller, one of my favorite wide receiver prospects. Um, Anthony Miller, when I first saw him, I saw Odell, I mean, not Odell, I saw Antonio Brown. And then second time seeing him, I couldn't put my finger on it. I was thinking maybe a little T.Y. Hilton. You know, it was, it was a lot of different things that I was getting from him. But what I definitely got from him was playmaker. Catching the ball, route running, slot, outside, didn't matter. He was a guy that was going to make plays, and I think that it is a great pick for the Chicago Bears. First, you get an Allen Robinson, who was a big, tall, you know, snatch that ball off the air type receiver. You still have Kevin White, who you're not sure what he can do, but he's better than probably most of the guys that you have on your team. And now you got Anthony Miller, who can come into the slot or can still pretty much be a starter, beating out a Kevin White. And then when it go when they go to three receiver sets, you can put him in the slot and he's going to still dominate there. So great pick by the Chicago Bears when it comes to him as well. Now, picks four through seven. Western Kentucky linebacker Joel, and I can't pronounce his last name. Um, yeah, I just can't pronounce it. Um, 
Bonaway. I'm gonna just say Joel Bonaway. Joel Bonaway. I. I I.E. Bunaway, I.E. Bunaway, I may be wrong how to say his name, um, when I watched this tape, I wasn't impressed by him, um, I can't remember everything I saw in him, but, uh, I just wasn't impressed by him as a player, like, at all, it, 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 it wasn't a guy that screamed a lot of athleticism, that could probably have potential to get better, it was just a regular linebacker that was out there that was just kind of playing, um, maybe, the Bears see something in him that I don't see, but I don't, I didn't like this pick that they had. Then they chose Belial Nichols, defensive tackle from Delaware. Another pick where I didn't really watch the tape as him because I didn't hear of his name, so I can't really get too much into him. Um, I've said in the plenty of videos, there are two different websites I use. Some players' names are just not on it, so I never get to watch most of the stuff. Um, then you have Kali Fitz, defensive in Utah, same thing. Didn't get to watch any tape of him, so I can't give a, a good description on him. So I am I have to just skip the name. I'm sorry about that. I will try to probably incorporate a, a website or two next time in next year's draft so I can give better draft breakdowns when it comes to these prospects. And then in their last pick, they chose another receiver, J Javon Wims from Georgia, um, from what I saw about Wims, I think that he's one of those guys that he's not like a number two, a, a number one, number two, a number three receiver. He's like a number four receiver. He's a guy that you just throw it to it a couple of times a year, see what he does, see if he makes a play. Um, he's not the guy that consistently gets open, but he does have a big body. Um, he plays pretty physical. Um, but Javon Wims, you know, wasn't too impressed with him. Um there wasn't a lot of things that stood out about him as a player. Uh, it wasn't like he was a great run after the catch guy. It wasn't like he was a great catcher of the football. It wasn't like he was a great route runner or anything like that. So he just seemed like a regular receiver that will have to make his living on special teams to really make it into the league. But when it comes to him, I just can't, you know, there was nothing else I could see. Um, honestly, their whole draft, they had seven picks. I can only say that I really like two out of the seven. So when it comes to the Bears draft class, I'm not too wild about it. But we will see in about three years where this draft class take them. And maybe this draft class could push them into being a perennial Pro Bowl team. Who I mean, not Pro Bowl, I'm sorry, playoff team. Who knows what this team has in store for them, what they become. But um, we will see in three years. So anyway, if you like this video and you want to see more draft breakdowns, please subscribe to me, Draft Authentic. Like I said, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't like what I had to say about the Chicago Bears and their draft picks, please comment so we can debate. And please share this video so other people can come and watch it, comment, we can debate, and we can have this huge drafted community that I'm trying to build. Anyway, once again, this is Draft for Authentic. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.